Hello and welcome to Power Play for Wednesday, May the 18th. I'm Mercedes Stevenson. The debate over how the military handles harassment and sexual assault heated up again today on Parliament Hill. The defense minister is promising big changes. We'll find out what they are in just a few minutes. Also ahead on today's show, a moratorium on political ads. The government is spending billions of dollars on advertising, much of it your tax money. Today we talk to a former chief electoral officer, Jean-Pierre Kingsley, about what he thinks of the ads and what why he's arguing they should be stopped. And John Kerry meets with Vladimir Putin. While Stephen Harper keeps Russia in the deep freeze, could U.S.-Russia relations be thawing? And what does it mean for Canada? We'll get the latest from Washington, D.C. And another would-be Liberal candidate steps aside for a star selected by Justin Trudeau. Our journos weigh in as the way is cleared for Toronto Police Chief Bill Blair to run on behalf of the Liberals. But first, an unequivocal promise from the Defence Minister Jason Kenney to create an independent body to handle sexual harassment and sexual misconduct allegations in the military. This is what he said today in the House. Will he guarantee that the Canadian Armed Forces establish an independent body to handle sexual misconduct, yes or no? That's a good question. <laughs> In a statement released today from the Chief of Defence Staff, General Tom Lawson, he said, to be absolutely clear, we have accepted this recommendation in principle. Major General Whitecross is now actively examining these models to develop recommendations for what will be the best fit in Canada. We fully recognize the need to have a centre which is independent of undue influence from the chain of command. And uh, joining us now with their view from this, from the Hill, a big topic today are MPs in, who are here in studio, our Wednesday panel, the Conservatives Stella Ambler, the NDP, uh, Ginny Sims, and also the Liberals Yvonne Jones. Now, this was a big topic today on the Hill. A lot of people were taken aback. The Jason Kenney stood up and said they're actually going to create this. Just to give viewers some background, this comes from an independent report uh, that was done by a former Supreme Court justice looking into some of the issues of sexual misconduct, sexual assault in the military. She gave 10 recommendations. One of those recommendations was that there needed to be an independent center outside the chain of command where victims could go to report this because they felt they couldn't trust the chain of command or that it could affect their career negatively. Uh, the defense minister promising to do this today, is this something that has been brought in uh, on the political level by the government for the military? I think uh, what it is is a recognition more than anything of the seriousness of this issue and the fact that this government does take it seriously um, and that no one, uh, no one in the military uh, should be subject to this kind of um, disgusting behavior, whether it's uh, uh, sexual abuse, sexual harassment. Um, and so I think that uh, not only has the um, uh, military taken this very seriously but we're supporting them in that and so when they say um, when the chief of defense staff says you know that all 10 recommendations of the Deschamps report are going to be uh, examined and implemented in, uh, in some way that um, we support them wholeheartedly without reservation without any kind of hesitation so oh. I think that's what it says. Ginny, when the military initially came out when this report was delivered, they sounded a bit iffy on whether they were going to go mm. ahead with that. And we have documents we've obtained today where uh, they basically set out uh, what was happening in terms of the, the initial report. This is written by the CDS, uh, and it's giving a directive to the strategic response group, saying, you know, here are the parameters you have to operate within. It doesn't sound particularly keen on considering something outside of the chain of command. Do you think that political, I don't want to say interference, but intervention, was necessary to cause the military to accept this? At the end of the day, the minister had to take responsibility. This is an issue that's been on the books or not in the books for a long time. And ever since I've been in the House, it's been at the forefront, sexual harassment, sexual assault, sexual abuse within our armed forces. Totally unacceptable. It's a human rights issue, but it's also a safety and security issue. These are the men and women who put their lives at risk for us. And I think as a body, as a government, and as a society, we need to ensure some safety for them. And I think having an independent body that they can put their complaints to and have the processes go through is absolutely critical. It's very difficult to go up the chain of command and, you know, to complain to your seniors, people who are going to be responsible for your promotion or the ones you report to when it comes to reporting sexual abuse and sexual assault. 
And we have seen quite a few bungled investigations uh, over the last few years. So for me, this is a, a good step in the right direction. But Mercedes, this is a very, very difficult topic, but it's one we cannot keep brushing under the carpet. And now I'm hoping that the minister has made this commitment. I'm hoping we will see immediate action. I don't think we need to study this for another year or two years or five years. I think it's time to take action and take decisive action so that we can reassure our men and women in the military that we the government, I should say, is going to take measures to protect them and that we as Canadians are not going to tolerate the kind of uh, lackadaisical almost approach over the last number of years. Yvonne? Well, in 2015, no person should be subjected to sexual harassment, sexual assault of any kind within the workforce in, in Canada, uh, especially those who serve in the military and on the front lines. They, they have very stressful jobs in protecting the safety and security of our country already. Um, our leader, Justin Trudeau, have already said all 10 of the recommendations put forward should be accepted and implemented. Um, I was disappointed um, with the original response from the uh, Chief of National Defense, um, but I, I like the fact that they're accepting uh, to a certain degree that this has to be an independent body of accountability outside of the chain of command within the military so that women that are victims can feel free and safe to go forward with their complaints. It's not new. People like Michelle Drapeau, former general, um, a very well-known lawyer in Canada, has been saying this for quite some time as he's uh, went forward to represent many women who've been sexually assaulted or abused within the line of duty. Uh, others have been saying this, so it's not new. Um, my challenge to government today is that you have to lead this process. And leading is not giving a commitment. Leading is in acting up on the recommendations and making sure that this particular body is put, put in place, but also the other recommendations are carried out. I think one very critical piece of this as well is defining what sexual harassment is. What is it when it comes to sexual abuse, sexual harassment, sexual assault? There's always various interpretations within the court, and, and in my opinion, and I think that has to be clearly defined so that and perhaps women... That, that goes beyond the military and exactly. in many cases as well. I do want to play a clip that we have. This exactly. is the Justice Minister, Peter McKay, and he's weighing in, arguing that there should be more cooperation between the civilian justice system and the military one. There should be perhaps a protocol or, or a consultation that takes place between Crown prosecutors and, and military justice system when those cases could be tantamount to a criminal charge rather than something that is done more administratively through court martials and court martials appeals. Now, Stella, when we're looking at this body and we're looking about this increased cooperation, uh, it's new to hear the minister talking about this. We heard the military initially come out. They said, well, we accept in principle. Wasn't too clear. The language changed quite a bit in the 24 hours following that to, no, we do accept we're just studying the best model. What does this model look like that we're talking about, and when do you think we're going to see it? Um, I think that um, I think that the strategic response team under Major General Christine Whitecross is going to act quickly and decisively. She has she has said that, um, and uh, I know that she's already working hard. She understands uh, um, I, they really couldn't have picked a more outstanding individual to lead the team. Yeah. Uh, Stella, today your government stood up and promised uh, an independent reporting authority. Do you think? that DND is going to follow through with this or is it going to take continued pressure from the minister's office which many are suggesting is what today required? Oh, I, th I see uh, every indication uh, from the military, the chief of defense staff and his, uh, um, the, the lead of the team, Major General Christine Whitecross, I see every indication that they take this very seriously. Um, they have said without hesitation that they are accepting all 10 recommendations. And on the uh, issue of the, uh, the centers of um, 
uh, the, the independent centers uh, where victims can go and where their complaints will be heard. Um, on that subject, uh, Major General Whitecross has said that, uh, that her strategic response team will be looking into other models, uh, countries uh, where this exists in various forms, Australia, uh, the U.S. and France, and that, um, and that they will come up with a model that works for Canada. Okay. And so I'm confident that they, they will, can and will do that. I know you have to go for votes soon, so a quick 30 seconds to you, Ginny, and then to you, Yvonne. Well, uh, I'm glad that everybody is now saying that the nine recommendations are going to be implemented, but I'm just hoping this doesn't mean more study, more study, and we're going to see this stretched out. I think that uh, our men and women in uniform have waited long enough, and I think it's time for action, and I think the minister needs to be engaged in this fully to make sure it happens very, very quickly. Um, you know, for the victims uh, who go through sexual harassment and sexual abuse, uh, another day is a day too many, so as quick okay. as possible. Yvonne? I take nothing for granted. I think we're going to have to continue to follow this to ensure that accountability portray, um, is portrayed by the government here. And uh, this is not new. People within the military service, women that have been victimized in uniform, have been asking for this for a long time. So have a lot of other people in Canada. And we're going to ensure that government follows through here. So we'll be watching uh, to see what happens. Uh, but I agree, we cannot delay this and we cannot continue to study it. It's a time for action and we're asking the government to Absolutely. act. Absolutely. And certainly I'm sure Canadians will be keeping an eye on this too right here on CTV's Power yeah. Play as well. Thank you very much Thank to you. our Thank Wednesday you. MPs.